Researching the roots of racism and recognising that the concept of race has no biological basis, but it's a system of social categorisation, was an essential step. Only through understanding racism and the different forms it takes can we challenge it and make a difference. We've been supported by an external consultant, Sadia Hussein Zavuk, who led the session on critical consciousness and has been an excellent support and guide throughout all this process. Creating a professional learning library of books and publications encouraged colleagues to widen their knowledge and recommend texts to one another. Having diversity and equity as an agenda item for departmental meetings involved everyone. Sharing and discussing articles developed a culture of collaborative learning. And in these meetings, uncomfortable issues have been explored, including personal beliefs around discrimination, white privilege and assumptions. Within a safe environment, staff, staff support one another to move forward, question views and share research. An aim has been to increase awareness and conversation around diversity. A newly founded staff book group selected the text, This Book is Anti-Racist by Jill, and they focused on that. Over coffee and cake, colleagues shared their own experiences and reflected on their spheres of influence. A challenge of leading this focus is ensuring that all staff are involved and have time to reflect on their beliefs and practice and feel empowered to challenge assumptions. Allocating considerable time for professional learning on diversity during in-service days, staff meetings and departmental meetings has ensured that all staff are engaged with and are supported, supported with this crucial focus. Two colleagues are currently participating in the Building Racial Literacy Programme, and that's a really helpful source for evaluating our practice. A staff focus group has been instrumental in co-constructing a plan to lead change. This group critically engaged with publications and texts. Some are displayed on the slide shown. Guidance from Education Scotland and the Coalition for Racial Equality and Rights, and in particular their self-evaluation tool, provided a vital structure to inform and support our professional learning and identify measures of progress. Our focus group that worked hard, they developed a mission statement outlining the school's five A's of diversity. So at Heriot's, we aim to foster the five A's of diversity. Our pupils, staff and parents are aware of differences in society. They acknowledge their own biases and difficulties that may occur due to these biases. They accept and appreciate the UNCRC Article 2, non-discrimination, and aim to be an ally to show respect and mitigate against inequality. Feedback on our five A's was sought from pupil groups, parents and staff. Engagement with pupils, staff and parents is essential. Otherwise, there's a real danger of making assumptions about the best way forward, which could be ineffective and at worst reinforce racial discrimination or alienate those who are served to benefit most from this. Our students demonstrate their passion for diversity and equity through their involvement in pupil diversity groups, and these groups are encouraged to lead change. One of the most impactful training sessions for staff was led by our senior school pupil diversity ambassadors. They shared their experiences of various forms of racism in education, including incorrect pronunciation of a name or avoidance of calling on someone by their name, making cultural assumptions about people's backgrounds and discriminatory language behaviour. They also experienced, they also shared experiences of not being seen in some educational contexts such as no pictures of girls from BAME background studying science subjects. This was a powerful message for staff to acknowledge how unintentional actions can be discriminatory and that everyone has a part to play in changing behaviour, attitudes and processes. From the work of this group, five key themes for action were identified and are shown on the table displayed. To address the first point, staff compiled a register of all names written phonetically. This has been useful, especially further up the school where some pupils have many teachers. For the second point, members of the staff focus group were honest about their experiences of making cultural assumptions. 
this group we're opening with colleagues, helping everyone to reflect on their practice and recognise that it's vital to know all your pupils. Taking time to consider and identify cultural assumptions within the curriculum was also a key focus. For the third point, the pupils were keen that all staff instigate discussions which show awareness of discrimination. This may come up via a history topic or a novel study. Every class in the primary school has a copy of the book All About Diversity, and class teachers use it as a stimulus for many discussions. Assembly messages support this, as do lessons on diversity. Professional learning supported the fourth point, as did the support materials created by the City of Edinburgh Council for schools to develop an inclusive, diverse and decolonised curriculum. As Professor Rowena Arshad says, having the knowledge, awareness, skills and dispositions to talk about race and racism is a professional competence. For the final point, covering being open and honest rather than saying nothing, pupils ask staff not to be afraid of participating in uncomfortable conversations. They said that something is always better than nothing and that any attempt at challenging discrimination will be less harmful than ignoring it altogether. Pupils in a primary school are keen to raise awareness of diversity. They've written and led several assemblies, including celebrating different religious festivals, focusing on Black History Month and highlighting diversity and discrimination with the common theme of be an upstander, not a bystander. They were instrumental in updating the school library to include a more diverse range of texts and authors and are now in the process of reviewing their classroom libraries. The Pupil Diversity Ambassadors completed an audit of displays around the school. Calling themselves Diversity Display Detectives, the group photographed displays which promote diversity. They showcased these examples in a video explaining to staff the importance of everyone being able to see themselves in displays and linking it in with the UNCRC. Engagement with parents involving inviting parents to a consultation evening where we shared our vision, reasons for change to the curriculum and approach to promoting a culture of diversity and equity. Organising small group discussions led to useful conversations and feedback helping us to widen our perspective. Looking, thinking back to that achievement triangle and knowing my practice, a target is for all teachers to analyse the curriculum with criticality. A helpful tool for decolonising the curriculum is the anti-racist critical thinking model. It can be applied to lessons, topics, resources, novel studies and even school events. We started small with every teacher using this model to review one area of the curriculum each term. Most chose to focus on their social studies or topic work. Primary one made changes to their Wonderland topic, bringing in fairy tales or more diverse, diverse culture, and also challenged gender stereotypes. Our primary fives found more diverse historical figures to study and widened their topic to include slavery. Our P7 World War II topic was widened to include the soldiers from the British Indian Army, who were part of the world's largest volunteer army. When decolonising the curriculum, we looked at building a wider range of perspectives into the work that we already do. This made it more manageable for colleagues. Staff were asked to consider stereotypes, assumptions, and whose voice is not heard. This was aligned with key themes of social justice and global citizenship. I'm really fortunate to work with a fantastic team and they took the lead in many areas. A dedicated group of teachers created a series of lessons on equity and diversity for nursery aged children through to those in P7. The Senior School Pupil Diversity Group reviewed our materials and our lessons. The evaluation of primary pupils was very positive with the children showing a real interest and commitment to pro promoting a culture of diversity and equity. The lessons begin in the nursery, where we discuss differences and the value of them, to primary one and two, where we discuss what racism is and where our skin colour comes from, to primary six, where we explore concepts such as privilege and discrimination and their impact. A range of books support this learning and reflection. We face challenge about decolonising the curriculum, with some suggesting that this approach could even be illegal. Referring to research and consultation with Sadia supported our stance alongside encouraging viewing the changes as not being threatening, 
but empowering for everyone based on core values. The ethos of being a rights-respecting school permeates everything. As part of the Into Headship course, we were introduced to Murphy's COPE process for dealing with dilemmas, and I found that helpful and would recommend employing this approach when facing any challenging situation.